What is the price change after a single swap on Uniswap B3? I'll go over some of the math behind it. For the math that I'm gonna about to show you, we'll assume that there's enough liquidity in a single position. And what we're going to find is the price P1 after swapping either Delta X or Delta Y. And we're assuming that there's enough liquidity to swap on the curve X times Y equals L square. In this case, the price P1 after a swap is described by these equations. Delta X is equal to delta of 1 over the square root of price P times liquidity L. And using this equation, we will be able to get the price after the swap square root of P1. Likewise, delta Y is equal to delta of square root of P, the change in the square root of P times liquidity L. And using this equation, we will be able to get the price change after a swap square root of P1. Now for this video, I said that we're assuming that there's enough liquidity to swap on the curve x times y equals l square. So first I'll explain what we mean by this. What do I mean when I say that we are assuming that there's enough liquidity for a swap on the curve x times y equals l square? Here we have a graph of x times y equals l square in blue. And then in orange, let's say that this is the curve of the real reserves. If the swap doesn't have enough liquidity, then our starting price will be, let's say that somewhere between P of A and P of B. And after the swap, the price P1 will be outside this range, either above P of B or below P of A. You can see from the graph that there isn't enough liquidity since the liquidity is only supported between the price range P of A and P of B. And the price after the swap falls outside of this price range. So not enough liquidity means that the price after the swap P1 is either less than P of A or P1 is greater than P of B. On the other hand, let's go over what it means for the swap to have enough liquidity. Again, in blue, we have the curve X times Y equals L square. We're trading on this curve. And what we mean by having enough liquidity is that the price P1 after the swap is still in the range of P of A and P of B, assuming that there is liquidity inside these price ranges that is represented in the orange curve. So enough liquidity means that after the swap, P of 1 is greater than or equal to P of A, and P of 1 is less than or equal to P of B. P of 1 remains in the range of P of A and P of B. That is what we mean by enough liquidity. Okay, so now let's go over the math. Let's derive these two equations, and then later we'll derive this equation. Let me define some variables first. We'll say that P of 0 is the current price, and at this point, we have X of 0 and Y of 0. After the swap, we'll say that the price is P of 1, and you'll have corresponding X of 1 and Y of 1. And we're trading on the curve X times Y equals L squared. There are two important equations that we'll be using. Taking this X times Y equals L squared, we can rewrite it as L is equal to the square root of X times Y. The price P is defined as Y over X, so the square root of price P is equal to the square root of Y over X. From these two equations, we get two important equations that we'll be using in this video. X is equal to L over the square root of price P, and Y is equal to L times the square root of P. This equation is true for all X, Y on the curve X times Y equals L squared. So these equations apply to X1 and Y1, X0 and Y0, since all of these points are on the curve x times y equals l squared. This is an important fact to remember as we will derive the equations for delta x and delta y. So let's now derive our first equation, find delta x. By definition, delta x is equal to the change in x, so that will be x1 minus x2. On the graph, it will be x1 minus x2. The difference is delta x. Next, let's rewrite x1 and x0 using this equation. So I'll copy this and then paste it here and then say x sub 1 will be equal to L over the square root of P. P at x sub 1 is P of 1. So over here, I'll put a P of 1. And likewise, we can replace x sub 0 using this equation again. So I'll copy this and then paste it here and say x sub 0, at the point x sub 0, we have p of 0. So x sub 0 will be equal to L over the square root of p of 0. Okay, we rewrote x sub 1 and x sub 0 using this equation over here. So let's rewrite this equation. This is equal to x sub 1 is equal to L over the square root of p of 1. 
minus x sub 0 will be equal to this equation. Copy, paste it. x sub 0 is equal to L over the square root of P of 0. So we're using this equation to rewrite x sub 1 minus x sub 0. And we get this equation. Next, let's rewrite this equation. So I'll copy this, paste it here, and I'll pull out a L to here, and then replace these L with a 1. Same over here. And I'll put these in a parentheses. So I'll put these in a parentheses, and then I'll move the parentheses from the left over to the right. You'll see in a second why. And this is equal to Notice that inside the parentheses we have 1 over the square root of p of 1 minus 1 over the square root of p of 0. We can rewrite this as a new variable. So let's define a variable. We'll say that this is equal to delta of 1 over the square root of p. The equation inside the parentheses, we just relabeled it, said this is equal to delta of 1 over the square root of p. And then we have a L left. So copy this and then paste it here. And that is our first equation, delta x is equal to delta 1 over the square root of p times liquidity L. You'll do the same trick to find delta y. Delta y is equal to y1 minus y0. And then using this equation, we'll rewrite it, copy, scroll down, and then paste. And then say y1. Now if I scroll up, at y1 we have price p1, and at y0 we have price p0. So at y1 we have price p of 1 and then we'll do the same for y of 0. So y of 0 is equal to L times the square root of p of 0. Okay so we're gonna replace y1 with this equation and y0 with this equation. So delta y is equal to y1 is equal to L times the square root of p of 1 minus y of 0 is L times the square root of p of 0. And this is equal to, we'll pull out the L from this equation and then put the rest in a parentheses. So say I'll put the L on the side on the right. And then this becomes a 1. And we'll put this expression in a parentheses. And this is equal to square root of P of 1 minus square root of P of 0. We'll define this expression as a new variable called delta of, of square root of P. The change in the square root of price P this is equal to square root of p of 1 minus square root of p of 0. And then lastly we're left with a L, so paste it. And we have our equation for delta y. Delta y is equal to delta of square root of p times L. Okay, we worked out the equations for delta of x and delta of y. From here, using these equations, let's derive the equation for the square root of p of 1. First, let's find square root of p of 1 from delta of x. So I'll scroll up. And then we'll be using this equation. So I'll copy this and then paste it here. And then what we're going to need is this part of the equation. Delta of x is equal to 1 over the square root of price p1 minus 1 over the square root of p0 times the liquidity L. And from this equation, what we're going to find is the square root of p of 1. This P1 represents the price after we do a swap of delta x starting from the price P0. First I'll divide both sides of the equation by L and this will move L to the bottom of delta x. So copy it and then bring the L over here since we're dividing both sides of the equation. Delta x over L is equal to the delta of 1 over square root of P. Next I'll bring over this 1 over the square root of P of 0 over to the left by adding both sides of the equation. So this is equal to, and then add both sides of the equation by 1 over the square root of p of 0. The 1 over the square root of p of 0 on the right side cancels out with a minus. So this will become a plus. And then I'll remove the minus sign. Okay, so we now have a equation for 1 over the square root of p of 1. But what we're looking for is an equation for the square root of p of 1. So what we'll have to do is flip both sides of the equation. Before we do that, we'll simplify the equation on the left side. The common denominator will be L times the square root of P of 0. This side of the equation doesn't have a square root of P of 0, so multiply it. And then this side of the equation did not have a L, so multiply it by L, and we get 
and L of removal 1. So this will be the top will be delta x times square root of p of 0 plus L and the denominator will be L times the square root of p of 0. And this is equal to 1 over the square root of p of 1. And we're almost done to derive the equation for the square root of p of 1. All we have to do is to flip the equation. Copy this. Then I'll paste it here on the right. If we flip the right side, we get a p of 1. And if we flip the left side, this part comes up top. And this part goes to the bottom. And that is our equation for square root of p of 1. L times the square root of p of 0 over delta x times square root of p of 0 plus L. Lastly, let's find square root of p of 1 from delta y. So first I'll scroll up and then we'll be using this equation. Scroll down and then paste it here. And we're not going to need all of the equations. What we're going to need is this part of the equation. Starting from here, we'll divide both sides of the equation by L. So L goes to the bottom on the left side of the equation. So delta y over L is equal to square root of p of 1 minus square root of p of 0. And to get square root of p of 1, we'll just add both sides of the equation by square root of p of 0. So taking this equation, add a square root of p of 1 to the left side of the equation, and then add a square root of p of 1 to the right side of the equation, I have a minus square root of p of 0 here, and we're adding it, so they cancel out. And that is the equation for the square root of p of 1 from delta y. In this video, I showed you the math for how to get square root of p of 1. p of 1 is the price after swapping delta x or delta y, assuming that there is enough liquidity to swap on the curve x times y equals l squared. What these two equations tell us is that if we know l and the current price p of 0, and the amount of tokens that we're swapping, either delta x or delta y, then we can calculate the square root of p of 1, and from there we can calculate p of 1.